What is up my YouTube friends? Good evening. It is awesome to see all of you amazing people here this evening. We are going to have a freaking blast. I hope. That's the plan. We're going to we're going to have some fun. You got to let us know where you're from. Let's go over and see the beautiful Monica and find out how she's doing tonight. What's up, honey? Hey, honey. What's happening? Oh, I much. like the background. You like that? Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. We changed it up a little bit this week. See nice. if we can avoid getting strikes. Nice. And I don't mean bowling strikes either. <laughs> so we got folks from Virginia Beach, Myrtle Beach, one of our Myrtle favorite Beach. places. We love the Myrtle Beach. Palm Springs, Florida. All these people in warm weather places, honey. It just doesn't seem fair, does it? Well, sometimes we have warm weather. It's not cold here right now. It's just dreary out. That's all. New York, Ghana. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. We've got Mega Squad Trevor in the house. Mr. Siberian Foxclaw, a.k.a. Onion, in the house. What's up, brother? London, the UK, London. Texas, California. <laughs> nice. You know, Curd Note, I am doing pretty doggone good. Pretty good. How are you doing tonight, honey? I'm doing good. Yeah? I'm doing are you okay. sure? Yeah. Didn't seem, I yeah. Think so. Well, the first thing we have to do, everyone hopefully has their virtual popcorn already. So, <laughs> holy mackerel, one year for Blue Eyed Skadi. Wow. That's amazing. That's have we been that doing this? That is amazing. For you? Yes, we have apparently. Wow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's amazing. Well, of course, you all have your uh, virtual popcorn, so we're going to go ahead and embiggen in those bags. And Blue Eyed Skadi has probably earned her butter tonight. One year. Can you believe that? That is amazing. <laughs> that is absolutely <laughs> amazing. And of course, it is time for us to go ahead and open up those question forms so that everyone can go ahead and ask their questions on the form. 14 months for 14 Michael months. as a member of the streamer squad. Wow. Man, that's amazing. That is, that's absolutely insane. It's awesome. Gemma's in the house. What's up, Gemma? Man, hey, we got so Gemma. many awesome folks hanging out with us tonight. It is really awesome. So while hey, we're waiting for the question form, go ahead and put that link in there for those guys that don't know the question form. Go ahead, honey. Did you see the logician was on in the very beginning of the stream? He's here for 13 months as a member. Wow. Yeah. 13 months. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> He's working so hard right now. I did text him before the stream. He misses all of you, but no. unfortunately work has him very busy. So yeah. while we're waiting for some yeah. of uh, our question form to fill out, let's pop over here, have a chat for a brief moment. I just want to say, now we crossed 175,000 subscribers eh, a little over a week ago. Uh, I wasn't really paying that much attention because I'm just focused on, you know, creating a new show and creating new content and growing the channel. And hey, Dr. Rob, how you doing, brother? And, and so I wasn't all that focused on, you know, subscribers, just creating better content. But when any time that a silly milestone happens, and it's not really silly, I mean, a milestone like that happens, I, I can't help but just be completely humbled by the simple fact that, you know, everybody says, oh, you're amazing and all that stuff. Trust me, I just make content. You guys, you guys are doing all the work. And I can't thank you enough. Every video you watch, every time you make a comment, every time you put your thumbs up, every time you subscribe or share a video, all the donations and super chats that help keep this going, every time you click a link in my video to check something out, all of those things are the only reason why I exist. And I can't possibly thank you enough for all the amazing love and support that we've gotten that somehow managed to get us to 175,000 subscribers and a half a million views every single month. 
it just boggles my mind. It, it just, I don't know how it's possible, but I wanted to take a brief moment at the beginning of this stream to just say thank you. That I mean, <laughs> I'm humbled and I love you guys. And none of this would obviously be possible without all of your support. It means, it means a lot. So thank you so much. Let's get right into the questions. Now, the reason why we do the question form is because we want to get to every single one of your questions. And the best way to do that is for you to put them in a form and we go through them one at a time and we get to every single one. So if you put your question in the form, it absolutely will get answered. <laughs> it absolutely will. So, hey, there we go. I think we're going to get swept away in just a moment. I think so. I'm assuming Thank that our stuff Gemma. is functioning properly. I don't know. Maybe it's not functioning properly. I know. What's happening? You should talk know. to Michael Fire Jr. <laughs> I should. What's wrong with that? Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh. But well, that's working properly, but my but my stuff isn't. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> All right. You got to be kidding me. Where is there it is? <laughs> oh, thank you, Gemma. Gemma says, congrats on the milestone. Best hour crew. Man, best hour seems like an eternity. An eternity. For those of you who do not know, the best hour was my original live stream. I went live every single morning for an hour and hung out with a bunch of absolutely amazing people. <laughs> and Blue-Eyed Skadi, thank you so much. Uh, says, we love you, Michael and Monica. Probably Monica more, and that makes all the sense in the world. I mean, look at her. She's awesome. <laughs> oh, man, you guys are amazing. But the best hour of my day was just basically, I don't know, I guess you could almost consider it like humor or comedy, but it was like a gathering place where we just got together for an hour every single morning, hung out, and enjoyed each other's company. It was a pretty cool thing. And um, I miss it a little bit, but at the same time, it had its time, it had its place, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And basically, everything that I know about live streaming, I learned from doing it every single day for one hour in the morning. So there you go. I owe this whole entire channel to all those live streams. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. Let's go get to the first question. And while we do that, I am going to... Um, I'm going to fix my my camera problem. I'll be right back. Go uh -oh. ahead and read the question, Pumpkin. Do we, ha do we have any questions? We d yes, yes, we actually do have questions. All Not right. actually, we always have questions. I will awesome. read the first question, though. This one is a broad question. Um, let's oh, see how for, you answer. What do you mean? It's for women? No, it's a... It's a <laughs> It's an all-encompassing question. Let me put oh, okay. it that way. All Sorry right. for the terminology. <laughs> I know. There's young people in this stream, and they're like, broad question? I don't get the joke. I don't get it. I'm probably going to get beat up on Twitter Cancel. for that later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Age is showing. Yes, Dr. Rob. <clears throat> I, yes. I, le I accidentally left it right here <laughs> on, my, <laughs> on my shoulder. Doggone it. Well, let's get to the question, beautiful. Okay, okay. The first question is from um, Mavofik, Mavofik, and they want to know how's the what's the best way to grow your platform. Also, what are the best tips for OBS? All right. Well, let's go over here. So, the best way to grow your platform or to grow your stream. <laughs> <coughs> If I, if I had to give two answers to that, because there really isn't just one answer, but the, uh, the biggest thing is to pick a niche and make that niche as narrow as possible. So in other words, if you're going to do a channel where you, uh, where, where, you know, if you're going to do a channel about camping, then do, do a channel about a specific type of camping, whether it's tent camping or or um, you know, van camping or whatever. Do do it as specifically as possible 
to narrow down your actual audience. It makes it easier for YouTube to find an audience to share your content with. And the second most important thing um, is consistency. Upload every single week. Upload as much content as you can on a consistent basis on a schedule. So in other words, if you can't upload five times a week, that's fine. If you can't upload three times a week, that's fine. But if you can upload two times a week, then upload two times a week every single week. Don't miss a week. Make it the same time or on the same day every single week. And your audience will come and YouTube values consistency. YouTube will share out your content more often if you consistently upload. So those two things, pick a tight niche and upload consistently. And by nature of those two things, your content will just get better over time. If you have to upload once a week or twice a week, you're gonna get better at doing it. And the better you get at doing it, the more entertaining you'll be for your audience, giving you the experience that you need. And because you're already in a very specific niche, your channel will grow. So that would be my, those are honestly, those are the two big, big things about, uh, about doing it. <laughs> so, and as far as what's the best trick for OBS, the best trick is just to get in the ground, get in on the ground floor, keep it super simple and learn as you go. Um, I have lots of tutorials out there on the basics and then maybe you want to add a plugin. Maybe you want to do this. Maybe you want to do that. You don't need to do any of that to find success, but it adds to your knowledge and you'll grow over time. So take it slow in the beginning, keep it simple, focus on entertaining your audience and grow from there. Um, and you'll learn more about YouTube and you'll learn more about OBS as you go. So that would be my two biggest, my two big suggestions on, on those particular subjects. Let's go ahead and get another question. Thanks. That was a good one. I like that one. All right. Let's do it. All right. You, Mega you like squad this sparkly Trevor. background? It's pretty cool, huh? I told you we How were changing it up. Oh, I like that one too. Yes. You That's look very nice sparkly. One. It is yeah. very sparkly. It's very pretty. <laughs> it's very pretty. It's very pink. It is. Okay. Uh, oh. Mega Squad Trevor wants to know, how do you add the popcorn animation on OBS? All right. Well, that's pretty simple. Let me go over here into my tutorial screen and we'll pop up my OBS. And I have the popcorn uh, screen. Let's, uh, so we're going to click the plus and we're going to go ahead into our media source. We'll just call this popcorn and we'll click OK. And what we'll do is browse to uh, our stream assets, which are going to be in our current live streaming assets. And I'm not sure exactly where I put it. So let's see if we can find it. Now I should say, here it is right here. I should say that the popcorn animation was created by the logician for the stream. So thank you very much, logician. Um, there we go. We have it. It's a local file. We don't need to loop it. We only want to play it once. We want to restart the playback whenever the source is active. And then if I click OK, obviously you'll see our in big and bag of popcorn pop on the screen. Now, whenever I want to use it, all I have to do is click the hot key that activates it or I just click the I, which in this case, the popcorn is only on the two, uh, the two scenes that I ever actually talk about the popcorn on. So I just have them loaded into the scene and I just click the eyeball when I want the popcorn stuff to come up. So there you go. That is how we do the embiggen bag of popcorn. It's pretty awesome. And the same thing would apply. Let's go over to our question scene. The same thing would apply anytime we're talking about how ridiculously this live stream gets with your participation. <laughs> you guys are the best. All right. So uh, you always have to remember to turn them off too because if I leave it on like I have it on right now and then I switch to another scene and then I come back to that scene, guess what? It's epic again. It will just play over again. So you do have to turn the eyeball off um, once you play it and you're all set. The other thing that you could do is use the uh, downstream keyer to add those things in there and then you can just add them on top of any scene that you want. 
So the downstream keyer is an awesome way to use that as well. And it looks like Dr. Rob has already put links to the downstream keyer in there because I think he knew I was going to talk about it. All right, babe, what's the next question? Okay. The next question is from Villain Corp. He says, in OS, when I, in OBS, sorry, in OBS, when I get a raid, it shows a notification of how many raided. Not sure how to do that in Prism. I still hear the sound and my stream sees it, but I have to have OBS open just to see the notification window for how many people raided and who raided me. Can you help? Okay. Well, that's a part of what OBS has set up for uh, when you add your Twitch account directly. Um, you can easily just create um, create an alert for it and then add it into Prism. And in order to do that, what you would do, let's go over to my tutorial scene and we'll go into our stream elements and let's see, streaming tools and my overlays and we'll create a new overlay and we'll just call this and we'll start with that resolution. We'll call this overlay uh, raid and I'm pretty sure you can add a widget for raid. So alerts, widgets, members, super chats, is there a way, countdown, labels. There may not be a way to actually add something for raids in here. Um, I know that's like a thing that's probably built into OBS when you set up your, uh, your thing. The other thing that you can do, let's open up. So I don't think you can actually do that. Now that I look at, now I look through there, they don't have an alert for raids, which seems amazingly, that just, that surprises me. Yeah, he's talking to somebody else. Um, okay, so the other way that you could do it, let me open Prism, because I will show you where it should be located. Uh, let's see here. Where's my prism? And well, hopefully this won't crash the system. You just never know. We'll update later. And what I'm going to do is turn that off. Okay. So, um, over here on the side here, you have this. So this right here should show you all the alerts for your live stream. Um, if you're in Twitch, obviously I'm not, I'm located in YouTube. But if you just click this little alert button, it should pop out this box, which unfortunately you can't dock. I know they're working on it, but you can't dock it right now. But this should show you a notice that uh, tells you that you got rated or something like that. So this is where you're going to want to look. Um, you're also, if you want them to make sure that they add something like that to the uh, Prism Live Studio, find one of my Prism Live Studio videos and leave a comment in there that says, hey, it would be really nice if uh, I would be alerted when we have, uh, you know, if there was a way to add some sort of alert or sound effect or something for the raids. Um, because right now it doesn't, I don't know if it's built in. I don't even really know if when you have this alert box up, if it will show you the raid. I think it will, but I don't know for sure. And yes, Prism is free. Prism is free. So uh, maybe somebody can put a link to Prism, uh, to my one of my Prism videos in the, uh, in the chat there so that folks who haven't seen it yet can go check it out. Let's get another question. Hopefully that helps you out. Uh, I, I get the alerts. It just doesn't show who did it and for how many. Ah, I see. I wonder if that's a thing that would show up here. Um, I'm assuming you have other alerts. So I'm wondering if that's a thing that would show up here in your activity feed on stream elements. Um, you know what I mean? Because it would stink to have to have OBS. I'm sure... The other place that I'm almost positive it would show up is in the dashboard in your streaming piece on Twitch. It will definitely show up there. So 
there you go. Hopefully that helps you out. Um, Cause if you already have your dashboard open, then, then you don't have to have OBS open as well. It will, it will definitely show it either here or, or there, depending upon what you already have open instead of having to have OBS open as well. All right, babe, what you got? Okay. Uh, Blue Eyed Skiddy wants to know how to remove an audio source from OBS if you're no longer using it. All right, cool question. Let's go over to our tutorial screen. Let me get into OBS over here and we'll go to our tutorial screen. Okay, so we've got uh, a couple of different audio things in here. Let, let me put this on a vertical layout so you can see. Media source one, video capture device, video capture device, video capture device. So we have a media source and the media source is probably coming from source switcher. I'm not really sure. Let's go in here and see where it's coming from. I'm not sure where media source is coming from. Video capture device, video capture device. Interesting. And then we have our scene. So it has to be coming from this. Yep, that's where it's coming from. But let's go ahead and uh, all you have to do really to remove an, an audio source that you don't want anymore is you can right click on it over here uh, and you can hide it if it's not playing any audio. But if it is playing audio, if it's just something you added in here, like let's say we added, um, I don't know, what would we add? <coughs> if we added a media source, you can see it over here. All you have to do is delete that media source. You just right click on it and you go to remove and it will remove the media source that has the audio in it. If you just added like uh, if you went here and you added an application audio output capture and maybe it was Spotify or something. Um, obviously I don't think I have Spotify open so I can't but well, let's just add whatever. We'll add the Chrome extension in there. All right so now we have Spotify in there as an audio source uh, and you can see it over here. I can just remove it by right clicking on it and going to remove and there we go. Now if you're talking about the audio sources that OBS automatically puts in your stuff, um, they would be listed here in global audio devices. So when you first open OBS it will automatically have like desktop audio enabled and and you know um, mic auxiliary audio this could be enabled and if you find that there's one in there that just doesn't make any sense because you didn't add it go in here to global devices and see if any of these are enabled and just disable them and then that will take them away and that I'm guessing that might be more what you're talking about than anything else so yeah that's that's how you would fix that problem and I think I just locked up that OBS <laughs> I did oh yeah it just that one that one just pooped out on me all right well let's go get another question hopefully my main OBS doesn't poop out on me that would that would be bad that would be bad that would be bad well you said you might lock up the system or something yeah you sometimes when you open as much stuff as I do uh, you can run into that sort of problem yeah but, you know those are the risks that we take Lots when we of put on Lots Epic of stuff open. Streams. I know. I know you have to. You got to open lots of stuff. When we're trying to show you guys how to do what we do, sometimes it happens. Let me, uh, I'm just reorganizing and reopening over here. So you can go ahead and read the next question. Okay. Uh, Philip, Philip Omorji says, How can I go live on Instagram and Facebook using OBS? Well, I did a. Huh. Well, Instagram is a vertical format, so uh, the problem is that as far as I'm aware, Instagram does not uh, share its uh, stream key. So you can't actually stream to Instagram um, using a third-party app. Uh, I know, Darkness Exposed says Yellow Duck. Yes, Yellow Duck exists, and it will allow you to stream to Instagram. However, if you get caught using Yellow Duck to stream to Instagram, they will ban you. 
So I'm not going to suggest that you do that because I don't want to see anyone who has an Instagram channel that they worked really hard to build get, uh, yeah, get, get deleted or, or whatever. They don't share their stream key and there's a reason why they don't. I don't know what that reason is, but I definitely know that they don't want you to do it. Otherwise they would share their stream key. So, uh, so there's no real way to stream from OBS to Instagram. Obviously you can stream to Facebook, um, with uh with obs without any problems i have some videos on that if you want to check it out but other than that unfortunately i can't help you with the uh instagram piece and plus instagram is a uh instagram is a vertical format and youtube or uh, facebook is a horizontal format so it really doesn't work anyways because either way lots of your stream is going to be cut off and it won't be formatted properly so they are those two live streaming entities just aren't really all that compatible all right what you got babe what you got okay we have a question from jc laredo hello says, jc as always thank you my question is it possible i'm connecting my iphone to an incorrect port because i keep getting dropped frames while streaming via obs should I use a port in the front? US, USB 3, does it matter? Go car channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. For those of you who don't know about the car channel, I'm sure Dr. Rob or somebody can post a link in there. I do a car channel. It's kind of my side project. Right now, I am in the process of uh, fixing an old BMW. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, so yeah, uh, check it out if you're interested. The channel is called For the Love of Cars. Ooh. Oh, man, now my, my eye keys are still not working. <laughs> Hold on a second. There we go. Now I'm gonna have to fix that again. It's probably because I had to shut down my OBS and reopen it on the other screen. But the world, according to Fox, asked the question, any thought on EV nukes seems to be a combo of OBS and Prism. Um, I would put EV nukes more in the category of StreamYard, Restream, and Melon. Um, even though it... Yeah, I probably don't want to answer in the voice. But I really kind of do want to answer in the voice. Again, that's, you guys can't hear Monica having a conversation with me behind the scenes. So it sounds like I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> 93 people and only 55 likes. How is that possible? Come on, you guys. Unbreak those thumbs. Let's click that thumbs up button. It really does help. It really does. Let's go over and we'll go over here. All right, so this will work better. You guys will be able to actually understand me. So I look at um, I look at EV Mukes more like uh, an, a more advanced version of Streamlabs, Streamyard, or Melon. Um, Prism is a, a piece of software that you download and install on your machine. EV Mukes is an online browser source type thing that you can use to live stream. I have a little bit of experience with it, but I honestly haven't played around with it too much. But I have seen enough to know that it is a bit more advanced than Melon or Restream or StreamYard. So uh, that's about all I know about it, though. So <laughs> there you go. Hopefully that helps you. And thank you so much for the super chat. I really do appreciate it. All right. We're back over here, baby. And now, okay. and now I gotta close down my my thing and I'll reopen it. But go ahead and do the question, and okay. I will uh, I will be right back. I hope. I hope so too. Okay, we did have. I'm gonna reread the question from G C Laredo because we didn't get a chance to answer that one. Um, the, he wants to know. They want to know if my. Let me start this over. Is it possible? I'm connecting my iPhone to an incorrect port because I keep getting dropped 
frames while streaming via OBS. That's right. I got that. Okay. Um, all right. So when you, uh, I don't know what application you're using to add your iPhone to your computer, but I will say this. If you are adding your computer and a separate microphone, and uh, if you're adding your, your cell phone and a separate microphone and that sort of stuff, then chances are you are in a situation where you, um, you could be overtaxing the limitations of your USB port. In other words, a USB port has a certain number uh, or a certain bandwidth. And if you plug more than one or two things into the same USB bus, the bandwidth will uh, obviously fail you. And then you'll start dropping frames. It could end up choppy, that sort of stuff. <coughs> so the solution to this, generally speaking, is to make sure that you have your, your, your USB items plugged into different USB buses. Uh, in case of a desktop, usually there's a bus in the front and then there's a bus in the back. In my case, I have three different buses um, that I use on my computer, but uh, that would be the first thing I would check. Make sure you have stuff plugged into different USB buses that can hopefully help you out. Um, if you are using a, if you're using a laptop, usually the bus on one side and there's a bus on the other side. Uh, if not, uh, you kind of might be SOL. The easiest way around that is to uh, use camera source that has the mic built in so it's sending the same signal at the same time. What were you trying to say? Yep, so that's probably what it is. You're probably overloading the USB port. And this, uh, this donation or super chat is from Fighters, Fighters Evolution. Thank you so much. I just wanted to show some support. I hope my question gets answered. It will if you send it to the, sh to the forum <laughs> regarding using, oh man, this keeps scrolling up, regarding using StreamYard and gaming. Thanks and you rock. Well, thank you so much. We will definitely get to it, Fighters Evolution. We will definitely get to it. And Joseph just sent an awesome super chat. Says the BMW needs a mega squirt ECU. I'd love to help you out if you decided to go that route. Joseph, it's like you've read my mind. It's like you've read my mind. The problem is that the mega squirt says it works with 735 and mine is a 733. With that being said, I have to believe that there's a way to do it, and I'm sick and tired of crappy idle. So, please, 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 Joseph, if you know something about this and you would like to do that with me or help me on that project, absolutely message me either over on the For the Love of Cars channel or here uh, through my About page because yes, I've already looked into it and I've already tried to research it, but every all the information out there is on the 735 and not the 733. It's literally the same engine, just a little smaller. If there's a way to do it, I've already committed to purchasing it if it's possible because I'm just sick and tired of poor idle and all the other things. I want a little more control. So Mr. Butts, please message me if you know more about it because <laughs> I've, I've already been trying to research it, and I just can't find any information. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you so much, by the way, for the super chat. I appreciate it. All right. Wow. That's mm. awesome. Getting getting comments about the like about the car channel too. Tell tell everybody. Tell Mr. Butts what you think about uh, uh, <laughs> what you think about the BMW, honey. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> oh. it's the only way we should ever be online. I know, I know. I'm just not a. I'm just not as big of a fan of the BMW as Michael is. So we kind of are at odds about the BMW. I'm not. I'm not a huge fan of the idle problems either. I'm not a huge fan of the. It it didn't used to run as good as it does right now. So every time we got in there, it was a hit or miss whether we were going to make it to our destination. <laughs> so, yeah. 
I'm well, not what, in what, love with that car yet. No, what Mr. Butts is actually talking about is an is an ECU, which is a which is a brain that can actually fix 99.9% of those problems because okay. we can actually physically tune the stupid thing instead of just guessing what the problem is. We can, you know, okay. it, it, it gives us more feedback, more like a modern car, um, which is, you know, it's been driving me absolutely insane. And the logician says cars and houses equal money pits. He is yes. not lying. <laughs> he is not lying. Good to see you, my brother. Good to see you. I hope you are being safe. Yes, and, and it's good to see to Dr. Rob also in the house helping to moderate and regulate. Moderate and regulate. Oh, I think it's so awesome that Mr. Butts um, mentioned the mega squirt. I was literally looking at it like five or six times, mm -hmm. and uh, and I and I really want it because I'm sick and tired of how uh, how the car runs when it's at idle, and I just want to be able to fix it and use it. So hopefully he can help me out. <laughs> it's like a godsend. <laughs> Uh-oh. We're going to get whisked uh -oh. away here again, Pumpkin. Uh-oh. Just for you. Just for me. Thank That's you. That's what it says. I appreciate that. And I, there's not even a question there, which means I'm going to have to dance for it. Oh. If it ever. Damn. I don't know. Maybe it won't switch us over. <laughs> I don't think it will. Hey, show us that face you had on before we came live. Oh, which one? I don't know. Oh, you know which one. Just put it on. <laughs> yeah, show it, baby. Show it. Uh oh, hold on. I got to find it now. Oh, this one? <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Is. You little devil, you. <laughs> oh, there you go. World According Happy to Fox. Halloween. That's what you get, my friend. There you go. Uh, the logician go. says that's hot. I thought so, too. Me and Michael both said, hey, maybe you found a new makeup style. For some did. reason, it didn't actually send this to my thing. I'm having all kinds of streaming faux pas tonight. It's just driving me crazy. So we're going to definitely get this one in for you, Monica. But uh, it's going to take a minute. And let's see if we can re resend it. <laughs> and see if it goes. <laughs> and what what exactly are we doing? What are you trying to do? Well, you know, it's supposed to switch me over, but I have a feeling that... Oh, there we go. There we go. It did it. It just took forever. It did it. It just took forever. So thank you for the super chat. Uh, the World According to Fox. And his super chat is, No questions, just for Monica. <laughs> and yeah like you know that's good let's see what kind of comments we got a dr monica evil i like it i like it do it once do it right done that's right dr rob that is right a monica would it be possible for you to let me know if my question is in the queue that's uh hanky panky seven zero so when we get over there i'll uh i'm sure it's in the queue but uh, so lots of gaming. Slots of Gaming did see it. <laughs> uh, uh, Slots of Gaming is going to be in the bathroom for a little while. He'll be back. He'll be back. It's okay. Hey, Sandy, how you doing? How is Monica? I think she's doing pretty well. We'll let her answer for herself. Thank you so much, The World According to Fox. I really do appreciate it. Yes, that was very <laughs> nice. Thank you very much. Hanky Panky wants to know if you're married. Um, well, I am. I am. Uh-oh. Wait, hold on. Wait, you gotta... You're gonna... Wait, hold on. Hold on. Uh-oh. You gotta answer that again. Uh-oh. I'm kind of... I'm, 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 I'm buffering here. Are you married? Um... I am. Oh. <laughs> To who? To somebody that was just sitting where you are right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. We have too much fun on this stream. Now it's just going to catch up on all the stuff that it missed. 
So now it's going to flip me over every 30 seconds. Great. <laughs> don't don't Great. suffer the buffer, the logician says. <laughs> I know. So his hanky panky does have his question in the queue, right? Well, it, I, it, if he put it in the form, he or she, sorry, if they put it in the form, I I will get to it where we actually have 28 questions and we're only on question number six right now. Oh, so, so yeah, you're, he's number uh, 28. It's yeah, in, he's number oh, 28 of, of 28 wow. and we yeah. are on number eight. So you're, you're 20 questions away, brother. We'll get there. Let's let's let's. Yeah. Press on. Just just Let's, eat your popcorn and relax. It's, yeah. it, it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Hanky Panky Seventy. <laughs> okay. We so just got one... distracted with that with that virtual face, honey. I apologize. Well, yeah, but it, it started with that car channel, and then it kind of went from there. It so. did. I, I'm sorry. I, it's hard for me to control my excitement now i'm waiting to go over and get off stream and go over there and chat you know but uh, we'll, we'll get through it <laughs> All right. yes okay Let's do okay it. so are we ready to move on well i'm ready okay all right the next question is from the uh row row report row report it says how does your guest see the obs live stream without any delay currently using StreamYard, but my guest is having a problem with delay. It's making it hard for them to interact with my graphics on my stream. It says, thanks, love your videos. All right, well, the easiest way to fix this problem is, and I'm gonna show you, we're gonna bring Monica down over here so you can see. Uh, now, I know this isn't StreamYard. This is uh, Melon, same thing. So if I wanted to have something uh, that my audience or that, that my, uh, my guests were going to have to interact with, what I would do, and you can do the same thing on there, just share your screen, whatever screen it is that you happen to be working on um, or whatever, or share the, share the window or share the Chrome tab, whatever it is. So let's just say I wanted to share my uh, stream deck. Well, now all the people that are in my stream can see what I'm sharing immediately. It's in real time. They see it, even though the audience won't see it for a few seconds later. They can see it right here. And of course, you can see Michael and Monica and everybody are in here. And the beautiful thing about this is if somebody who's who's in your uh, stream has conversation about whatever it is you're talking about, you could just move them over and switch usually. Anyway, you can you can usually I think it's because this is like a weird shape that it won't do it. But either way, you can usually drag these and drop them and switch them around. So that's how you get real time uh, their interaction into those things. And let's go ahead and make we'll embiggen and Monica again and bring it back up to the other screen so that we can get on. Hopefully that answers your question. Let's get another one. Okay. See. Who who um, asked that question? That was Rao report. All right, cool. Then then he just responded. We got it. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. Great. Yes. That's great. Okay. This next one is from Spencer Seventeen Prospecting. Well, hello, Spencer. I've only had the prospecting channel about three months, and I have 120 subs. But in the morning, I'll have 113 up and. Okay, hold on. Let me try this again. I've only had the prospecting channel about three months, and I have 120 subs. But in the morning, I'll have 113 up and down every day. That's the question. All right, so how many subs did he say he has? He has 120. Yeah. But in the morning, I'll have 113 up and down every day. Does that mean he loses 113? Uh, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. So I'm going to answer this question based on what I assume that you're saying. And you're saying that you end up every day with 113 subscribers in the morning and by the end of the day you have 120. Um, this is, you know, YouTube will purge or bring subs in. You also have people that unsubscribe and resubscribe. There's all kinds of different things. Um, generally speaking, I would, I would caution anybody to bother to spend too much time looking at subscribers. And by the way, congratulations for getting 100 subscribers. 
I'm not even kidding when I tell you that getting your first 100 subscribers is the most difficult task on YouTube. It gets a lot easier after that, assuming that you continue to do the same kind of quality and things that you're doing. So I'm assuming that you're talking about the fluctuation in subscribers that you're going to get on a daily basis. I wouldn't worry about that. I would go and uh, look at other videos in your niche, find out, uh, you know, kind of watch those videos, see what those guys are doing, try to mimic the kind of things that uh, they're doing in their videos that make them successful and make YouTube share them. And you will, you will continue to grow. Um, just make sure that you stay on topic. Your, your content is always about the same subject and you consistently upload and you don't have to worry about the fluctuation in your subscribers. Um, I'm sure on a daily basis, I probably lose 30 or 40 subscribers every single day. And as long as I gain more than I lose, I'm generally a pretty happy camper. Although if I'm being perfectly honest, I don't spend a lot of time looking at my subscribers and I know that there's probably a lot of people in the audience say, well, you don't have to, you have 275,000 subscribers. Well, I didn't start to get to the point where I had 275,000 subscribers until I stopped looking at my subscribers and started looking at my content and saying, how can I make this better? How can I make it more entertaining for the audience? How can I make, uh, how can I make content that people want to interact with and share and and all that sort of stuff. And if you and if you do that, you know, if you do that, uh, you're going to grow really quickly. So I, ho I hope that makes sense. And uh, yeah, can you use this chat and prism? Of course, of course, it's just a screen capture. Here, I'll show you. If I go over here to my tutorial screen, and I go here, and there's the chat. I'm just grabbing that chat and putting it on my screen. You can do the exact same thing in Prism. All right, and if you're interested uh, in how I do that, how I grab the screen, um, I show in OBS how I do it, but uh, the Prism method is exactly the same. Dr. Rob can put a link in there to the easy way to add chat to your live stream, I think it's called, or something like that. Um, something, something along those lines. All right, babe, what you got? Your image is very, very clear now. It's looking good. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Let's good. get another question. Yes. Yes, there is. Uh, this one is from uh, Silbra Harmony. Sorry if I butchered that. I apologize. Sil Sil Silbra Harmony. It says, Sweet. newbie here. How do I check to make sure my sound plays on YouTube when using OBS? I did a video playing Madden 2K23 and no sound. What did I do wrong? All right. Well, you may or may not have captured your audio. So let's go over into our tutorial here and I will bring up OBS. Um, so you can see that I have a bunch of audio sources running here. The main one is my video capture device. This sound source is for these little videos playing up here. They don't have any sound. That's why there's nothing there. And I have the audio turned off for this and that, but they still have those audio pieces in here. Um, but let's say that I added something in here like a game or something like that. If you add a game in there, you have to add the game audio source. So let me, let me, I don't know what I have on here, but let me see if I can find something that I could actually demonstrate what I'm talking about. Um, so if you want to capture your desktop audio, you got to go up here and you click your plus. In other words, you want the things that you're hearing in your headphones while you're on stream to play on your screen. Well, you go in and you click this plus and the easiest way to do it is audio output capture. And then you just capture your headphone audio, which in my case, is the Zone Wireless Plus right here. And so now uh, that's uh, the audio capture, audio output capture right there. Now, it just so happens that I actually do have some things on the audio output capture. If Monica talks, you'll see this move. There you go. So that's how you add the audio from your live stream stuff. Um, that's how you add the audio from your computer to your thing. 
Now you can also listen to it in your headset at the same time by going into properties and or uh, by going over here and into advanced properties and setting up your output stuff right here. But your desktop audio, you're always going to hear through your headphones irregardless all the time. It's one of the ways that I'm able to hear Monica and um, Michael when they're talking to me, even though I don't have their audio in the stream. So yeah, I use that little trick a lot. But hopefully that helps you to figure out how you, uh, how you can add the audio for your game into your live stream. Let's get another one. Okay. All right. Okay, we have, we have something here from Captain Gluten Free. Well, hello, Captain Gluten Free. Good to see you back, my friend. It is. And their comment was, I stopped my stream just to join yours. It's worth it. Just got my stream deck in and can't wait to set it up. I tip my hat to you and your team. It's time consuming, but so satisfying making content. You scared me and encouraged me at the same time. I have three years to retirement, and I hope this will be my steady income to pay for the extra gluten-free dining out. Thanks for being part of my journey. Keep it up. Good job. Oh, man. Captain Gluten-Free. Thank you. Thank you. And you're going to love the stream deck. And, honey, tell, tell, tell Captain Gluten-Free how many people are on my team. <laughs> Um, one. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Woohoo. Uh, yes, Captain Gluten Free. I do everything. All the work. <laughs> now, I do have a lot of people that help me. Monica is always helping me to create better thumbnails and better titles. Michael Panetta, um, who Michael. also helps to produce this stream. We talk every single day about channel strategy and things like that. But as far as video creation goes, other than um, I've, I've talked about my editor in the past, but other than that, all the all the content planning, all the thumbnails, all the titling, and everything in Edge of Your Stream um, is edited and done by me. Other than two videos a week, which are edited outsourced, everything else is done by me. And so, <laughs> Captain Gluten Free, Embrace it, my friend. It's a lot of work, but it is very rewarding if you enjoy doing it. It really, truly is the greatest job on earth. I love it. <laughs> and thank you so much for the kind words. I do appreciate it. All right, babe, what you got? Okay. Next one is from James R. Hello, James. What are your thoughts on Harris Heller's Senpai Gaming video on how the YouTube algorithm works? Well, I don't know, honestly, if I've seen it. Uh, wait, let's go over here. I, I don't I don't know if I've seen it. Michael, tell me a little bit. Is it basically on par or basically the same concept as the one from Channel Makers, I'm assuming? Right. Well, hold on, hold on a second. Let's come over here. And just for the sake of discussion, let's bring Michael in here so he can answer this because he has seen it. And he is also my uh, my analytics guru, basically. Um, so we're going to minimize that, and that will bring us all in here. And mm. we will we will embiggen him for the moment so he can... Move over. Yeah, there we go. There we go. All right, brother. So what's it about? So the, the whole video, it just essentially goes through the uh, process of what the AI does and how it you know, suggests videos. It, it's, it's the textbook explanation of how the AI works. And, you know, everyone calls it an algorithm, but it's not an algorithm. It's an AI. It's constantly learning. It's constantly changing. And anyone that says that the algorithm a slash AI has changed this year, it, it, it hasn't. It's just it's evolving. And well, it has. It, it's changing all the time, but right. its goal, its goal has not changed at all. Its no. only goal is to keep people on YouTube as long as possible, and it will continue to evolve and stuff as long as there is different changes and stuff going on on YouTube. Right. The only, um, the, the biggest change this year that's going to be occurring and I've got this straight from the horse's mouth. My my mentor that that does YouTubing, um, uh, Daryl Eaves, 
is the change that's going to happen with shorts and and long form channels and how those are going to be suggested out to the world so if you watch a short you'll be able to see like let's say michael does a short on uh obs and you want to learn more about obs it will actually show a long form content on michael's channel for that cool. but that hasn't happened yet but that's so to answer his thing. question though the harris heller video on how the the AI or the algorithm works, you would say is is good. It's it's going to yeah. be basic enough and teach people how to do it. And, you and know. I don't necessarily know about basic enough. It's a it's an advanced explanation of the algorithm and the AI how it works. And uh, you know it's it's if you're serious about YouTube, it's a good video to watch. He does a good job explaining it. Cool. But you can see it everywhere. I mean, what do like you, you think said, of uh, how would you compare it to the Channel Makers one? Oh, definitely not as good as the channel makers. I would suggest okay. watching the channel makers over. There. All right, if you could yeah. then grab that link and post it and and pop it oh, in yeah, the yeah. chat so that I'll, folks know what I'll we're talking about. And thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, you are the man, my friend. So there you go. Michael's gonna pop that link in the chat um, for the channel makers um, video on how the algorithm works. Because I think he really does a good job of explaining it for everyone, exactly how the analyt, how the how the algorithm um, places you and puts you where you need to be. Hey! Yes. Join us, Mark Fishter. Just became a member. Man, that is so awesome. For those of you who are not aware. You too can become a mentor down below. All you have to do is click that little membership button. You can become a super supporter that helps keep this channel going. And you can also become a member of the Streamer Squad where you get access to our Discord and so many amazing people that really know what they're doing. That really be helpful. And uh, take exam and just post that link. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you so much to those members out there. You help me keep doing this. Oh, that was so much fun. All right, babe. We got to get moving on these questions, don't we? We do. We do. Indeed, wow, we it's do. 8 o'clock already. Where did the time go? Oh, my gosh. Well, let's rock it. All right. Okay. Next question is from Jared Gaming. And Jared says, how do I add YouTube music like non-copyright music to my videos? Awesome. Okay. Well, I, I, actually, ha I actually did a video on this. Um, I think I released it last week, maybe. So if somebody could drop that link in there. Um, but I will show you. It's very simple. Um, so basically if you go into your YouTube page, uh, there is this cool thing down here called the audio library. And of course this is very limited. There are plenty of sources that you can pay for. Um, and there are plenty of sources out there that you don't have to pay for, but this is the quickest, easiest, safest way to do it. You go in here, you see all these music tracks. You can use any single one of them. You can go to the search library. You can look at the genres. So if you want rock, you can select that, apply, and bada bing. All the rock titles come up. You can look for angry rock titles or dark rock titles, whatever you want. You can play them over here. If you like them, you can download them. Then you just add them into your videos or into your live stream, and you will not get copyright strikes. They are free to use and supplied by YouTube. Now I'm working on a deal with a company that hopefully will have some other um, some other stuff for you guys. I'm really excited about it. But uh, Michael just dropped the link in there for that video as well, so you could check it out. That walks you through how to download them and how to check them out and all that stuff. But uh, I'm working with a company that hopefully will be a sponsor soon, and we can talk about uh, some of the amazing music that they're going to be working with that is free and also, um, and and also uh, really pretty decent quality music. So there you go. Let's get another question. 
Hello. Okay. JC Laredo has two questions, so I'll ask them at right. time. All right. Number, number one, I noticed you have the DVR feature enabled. Does this affect the stream quality or bandwidth? By the DVR feature, I I'm not sure where. Uh, where where are we looking at the DVR feature? It just says I, I noticed you have it enabled, so I don't know if it was on one of your tutorial screens. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find the location where it says anything like that, because if it's something that. Uh, oh, the, the stream stats, stats page. page. All right. Yeah, because I was just looking over there. I'm like, what? What does? Let's see. So let's go over there, in our tutorial screen here, and I don't see it. It's not actually listed here. But if we go over into stream settings, um, you can see it. Enable DVR. It's on. I don't know what it does. Um, I believe what it really does is it records the video properly so that it, when it is replayed on YouTube, it is in as good a quality as possible. As far as I know, that's probably really all it does. But uh, yeah, other than that, I don't know much about it. Um, I'm And I'm pretty sure that even if you have the uh, DVR not checked, it will still record. But uh, yeah, when that's not active, you can't rewind the stream. Oh, I see. So basically, it allows you guys to rewind this, the uh, live stream to rewatch a section while we're actually live streaming if you wanted to. So that's kind of interesting. I didn't know that. See, look at that. Lucifer M just taught us all something. Thank you so much, man. I, I really ap appreciate it. That is awesome. <laughs> Do you use the Stream Deck with OBS? Yes, of course. Of course, it's probably one of the coolest tools out there. And we have 93 concurrent viewers and 96 likes. That's awesome. You guys are amazing. Let's get another question. Okay. Okay. Um, I see a comment here in the chat that Joseph says um, he wanted to let you know he messaged you on Facebook about the BMW. Oh, he is the man. Hmm. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be going right there after this stream. <laughs> you know that's your second love first it's yes. streaming then it's the bmw go, so go, go. <laughs> okay plus it'll make great video content so there you go all right babe okay now this is the second question from gc laredo he says uh does streaming in low latency really affect quality as well i like to interact like you do what latency do you use Okay, so let's go over here, um, and I will show you uh, right here. So you can see right now, I have it set to ultra low latency. And if I'm being honest, it makes no difference to me, none at all. Um, I guess it kind of makes a difference in the chat, because I will see... Um, I guess you'll see the chat sooner because the stream sees the stream sooner. But I never look at the stream while it's broadcasting. I look at the stats and that sort of stuff. Uh, the only other thing I interact with as far as that goes is the chat. So I don't know if uh, I don't know if it affects the quality, but I've never had anyone tell me uh, I've never had anybody tell me that the quality was not good. So I have to assume that it probably doesn't affect the quality all that much as long as you have a solid connection. And Slots and Gaming says it's cold outside. Uh, it's cold on this outside toilet. Yeah. Well, you know, people in Alaska shouldn't have outhouses, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway. I, yeah, I would, I would hate, I hate the cold. Can you imagine being in Alaska and having to go in the outhouse? Oh my gosh. It'd be horrifying. <laughs> horrifying. Yeah. <clears throat> that would be a little chilly. Man, I'm telling you what, those bots tonight, tearing it up. Tearing it up. They're here early. <laughs> oh, brother. Let's get another <laughs> question, my beautiful lady. Okay. Hopefully that answered your question, JC. 
Jerry Gaming has a question wanting to know how do you do VTubing with OBS? Is VTubing a thing? I don't know. Supposed to be YT YouTubing? No. I, I, I'm assuming he's talking about VTube. I thought VTube was like a, another live streaming app. I could be wrong. Maybe somebody in the chat can um, correct me if I'm wrong. But isn't VTube just another YouTube style live streaming application? In which case, I don't know why you would use both at the same time. Um, Macho Chaos, am I correct in that assumption? Or it's creating a virtual avatar and then using motion tracking on your face to make the act. Oh, all right. Okay. So it's like a virtual, it's like a virtual um, thing. Man, I'll have to check it out. I'll have to check it out. I'm going to write it right down right here on my thing here. And we'll check it out. Maybe a video will come from that. Uh, what is it? VTubing. Maybe a video will come out of it, but uh, I mean, I don't, I don't worry too much about it because I use the snap camera, which I think does a pretty fantastic job of whatever type of, you know, avatar you want. I have seen some other stuff that uses like avatars where you can animate like, um, like, uh, I don't know, uh, like a GIF or something like that. But, um, I don't think they're quite as cool as this, which is why I use this. But I will check out VTubing and hopefully maybe put together some content for you on it. Let's get another question. Okay. Uh, you can use Snapcam with Streamlabs. You can use Snapcam with anything that accepts a camera. So, there you go. <laughs> question All right. this next question is from stapes s tapes stapes how wanting to know how to make a news like graphic with updating headlines that have smooth animations well i did a sports stream not too long ago where i talk a little bit about this um and somebody can pop that link in there to the sports stream one and then if you wanted to change the headlines on the fly and stuff I get into a little bit about how you would do that in my latest video um, on the downstream keyer so if you haven't seen that video you definitely want to check it out um, I can't remember I think it just came out in the last few days uh, yeah uh, downstream without uh, don't stream without this plugin in OBS. I, that's the Friday video, I believe. Uh, I'll pop that one in there for you. But that video, I show you how to put stuff on your screen and be. Oh, you know what? No, that's not that video. That's not that video. The video I'm thinking of, I haven't released yet. <laughs> uh, I have a video coming out that talks a little bit about being able to update your live stream while you are live. Darren, sign back, Darren, what's up, my friend? What's up, I hope you're doing well. Um, but the downstream keyer will also allow you to do things like update stuff on the fly, put it over top of any screen that you want. But I think you're gonna get the most out of the build a sports stream. I literally show you how to move stuff around the screen in real time to change it up. And uh, I think you'll like it. And there you go. Oh, so I'm a, I'm a VTuber doing my avatar in Blender 3D. To answer the question, yes, you have to use plugins and a software to do the face tracking. I kind of figured that. MS Siren Vixen. That's awesome. I would love to learn more about how you do it. I do have some Blender experience. I do enjoy using it. I, I blend from time to time. It is quite fun to use. We should give a 10-minute right. warning to closing the form down. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, yes. 10-minute warning to closing the form down because we still have a lot of questions to get to. We have a lot of questions, yep. All right, let's do it. Okay. All right, so the next question is from Matthew Kelly. Well, hello, Matthew. 
he says, I have a question about the titles that you mentioned from your channel. He mostly titles them as video game name stream number when he puts makes his titles. He says, would this technically still be enough to get viewers to come? I never thought of using titles to get more viewers since I technically don't click on videos just for titles. I look at videos and thumbnails or whatever he's looking for instead of the actual title. Right. Okay. Well, uh, let me let me answer this as best I can. Um, yeah, generally speaking, quality titles that uh, that are challenging to the viewer tend to get more views. Um, some of my better examples are "Don't Stream Without This Plugin in OBS." Uh, you know, things like that. Things that challenge the viewer tend to get more, uh, more, but let me preface this by saying if you're a small channel, uh, just starting out, it's really important for you to, uh, put keywords in your titling that can be searched for as well. So when you're a bigger YouTuber, you can get away with using a hyperbolic title that just gets people to click because YouTube is automatically going to share that content with a certain subsection of your audience. But as a new YouTuber, you don't have a subsection of your audience that YouTube is really going to be able to share that with to get you velocity. So if you're a newer YouTuber with you know less than say 5,000 subscribers, I would definitely recommend that you make your titles keyword rich. Also, make your titles as conversational as possible. So um, try to include those keywords in something that's interestingly hyperbolic. Like today I failed at whatever game you're playing or the five fails from today's stream or whatever. You know, stuff that's conversational and interesting, but also uses keywords. And I think you're going to find that it will be more effective. You'll get more clicks. And that's what it's all about. You got to get the clicks if you're going to get the views. And I think Monica just stepped away to check the phone because, you know, we got to kind of do that. Yes, logician, epic fail, <laughs> which, you know, man, sometimes that's that's like me getting out of bed in the morning. Epic fail. Um, I, I get a lot of questions about my process and how I work. So while Monica has went to answer the phone, um, I'm going to go ahead and answer this a little bit as best I can. So uh, Mondays and Tuesdays, I film my two main videos for this channel. So that would be my Monday video and my Friday video. So that starts out with Monday. I, uh, I script everything and I script out my, uh, I script out my hooks. I try to get an idea of what I want to use as my hook. And then I, uh, I also try to come up with some bullet point ideas for the thumbnail. So I'm already thinking about the thumbnail and the title before I ever film anything. Um, then on Monday afternoons and Tuesday, I film everything, I sequence it up, and I get it up to my uh, editor. And he takes care of all the magic beauty that happens in those videos once I finish doing it. Then on Wednesday, Thursday, and Sometimes, most of Friday, I'm working on Stream on the Edge. So I'm scripting usually on Wednesday Wednesday morning. And then uh, by Wednesday afternoon, I have my scripts down. I do all the fills, like the intros to each segment. Then I do the screen captures and voiceovers for each segment. And we put it all together, hopefully, by the end of Friday. Um, and then the, the, um, the thumbnails and titles never end. I pretty much create thumbnails and titles in the evening while I'm watching TV, um, and you know, in, in, through in, throughout throughout that sort of stuff, I'm also working with Michael to uh, come up with different channel strategies and talk about video ideas and things like that. So I would easily say that 60 hours a week are is about what I spend doing all the work that it takes to run this channel, just in case. Um, anyone thought it was easy. It's not. It's a labor of love. You have to be kind of obsessed with it. But when you can get to do this for a living, it's, it's pretty damn fun. It's pretty awesome. Monica's back. Let's get another question. 
Okay. Not All right. Bad. Sorry about that. All right. The next question is from Cyperian Foxclaw. Well, hello, so, Onion. <laughs> any recommendations for gaming when using the virtual camera in OBS? I'm trying to pull in the camera as input source, but it looks bad, but fluid or good, but then lags. Any advice? Essentially, I'm trying to use the virtual camera in StreamYard. StreamYard doesn't handle gaming. Huh. So, if I'm getting this right, you are, are you streaming with StreamYard or OBS? Uh, so basically what he's saying is he's bringing stuff into, um, he's bringing stuff into um, OBS and then using the virtual camera to send it to StreamYard. Trying to um, use the virtual camera in StreamYard, yeah. Okay. But he says, S go ahead. Because his first question is, any recommendations for gaming when using the virtual camera in OBS? <coughs> Excuse me. And then he says, essentially, I'm trying to use the virtual camera in StreamYard, so I'm I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah, I'm not I'm not totally sure what you're asking here, um, Onion. But uh, yeah, uh, if I would I would avoid using the virtual camera. It, it definitely causes problems. But uh, like if you're sending the virtual camera from OBS to something like StreamYard, how are you getting the audio? Um, and if StreamYard has a virtual camera that you're sending like uh, guests and that sort of stuff to, why not just use a display capture um, or a screen capture for that like I do? Uh, that seems like it makes more sense, but uh, you are in the streamer squad, so please do me a big favor and um, message me on on the uh, Discord, and we'll we'll follow up and see if we can't figure out how to how to answer your problems. Cause uh, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what what uh, what the direction of your question is. Let's get another one. Okay. Okay, another. That another was question. onion, right? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Another question, or at least they said they were onion. I'm pretty sure it was. Um, Captain Gluten Free has another question. Awesome. I feel Streamlabs is holding me back because everything they offer of value is behind their subscription. Is there a way right. to add plugins to Streamlabs that are not offered in their online store? I'm hesitant to go back to OBS because my stream looked like crap and the settings always changed. Huh. Well, I can. Uh, if you're talking about the settings for your camera, those now stay the same. Um, so they have fixed that problem. But uh, you cannot add plugins in uh, Streamlabs OBS, unfortunately, um, because it is an offshoot of OBS and not actually OBS. They do not have a way to add any of the plugins. So unfortunately, all the extra features that you get in OBS are not available in Streamlabs. With that being said, oh. Wait, Cyperian Foxclaw said they did not ask a question. <laughs> His question is, who's trying to impersonate him? Oh, my brother. I apologize then. Um, yes, how, how, how are we to know? How are we to know? You, dir you dirty buggers. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so I'm, I, I lost my train of thought on there. But uh, there is no way to add plugins in StreamYard. And personally, StreamYard is exceptionally inefficient. So your best bet, if you're trying to pull off something epic and something fantastic, is to try to roll over to OBS and figure out the camera problems. Because you will inevitably learn more and get a much better, tighter uh, live stream with OBS. Just because you have so many more... Uh, you have so many more options. You have so much more control over the visuals and all the things that you can get. Uh, unfortunately, I understand you had a bad experience and you're already streaming. So what, what I would do is kind of uh, try both. Get both running at the same time. And then, uh, you know, once you get the problem, the bugs worked out from, uh, from in OBS, then switch over. That's what I would do. Because inevitably, Streamlabs is going to cause you problems because it is a less efficient platform anyways. 
And it appears that I've been told that it is that time of night. We must close the form down. Oh. I know. It's sad. We're going to wonder who did that later. Anyway, let's get another question. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, Rodrigo has a question. Hello, Rodrigo. Any downstream, downstream keyer for Prism? There is not yet, but but I would love to see it. All you have to do is in any of the videos that, that I've done on Prism so far, leave a comment in there and say, hey, we would really like a feature like the downstream keyer, and hopefully they will work it in. They do read all the comments in those videos. They're taking all that as feedback and continuing to create a better... Uh, a better live streaming tool. So that's the best way to get that stuff in there or go into their forum and hopefully they have a feature request in the forum. You can you can request the feature there. Um, so yeah, unfortunately it doesn't exist just yet. All right, Bay, what's next? Next question comes from Axolotl Decoy. What does that make you think? Well, hello, Axolotl. Yes, I'm a, I'm a big fan too. God bless you. <laughs> you know, you, oh, I forgot. Uh, Michael doesn't watch. He doesn't. He doesn't watch uh, BattleBots. BattleBots. <laughs> Bat yeah, BattleBots. Axolotl's a BattleBot. Michael, nerds. sorry. <laughs> I, know, I know we're such nerds. Okay, um, what are some good layouts I could use in OBS to get more views? By the way, I'm a faceless YouTuber. Got any ideas? I've only got 59 oh, subs. I'm so sorry. Man, well, hopefully um, you can find a face. Because I could tell you that, uh, man, it's got to suck to be faceless. But get yourself a good camera. Put yourself on, on, your, uh, on your live stream. And I, I know I just did a video about this this week, but here's a little prequel. It's going to be extremely impossible for you to become a successful live streamer without a camera especially a successful game streamer without a camera. And the reason why is really, really, really simple. Because it's not about your layout on your screen, and it's not about your uh, really cool alerts, and it's not about your overlay. It has absolutely nothing to do with any of that stuff. It has to do with your audience's connection to you. Because anyone can play the same game and anyone can have the same overlays and anyone can have the same alerts. But no other stream is going to have the you. You are the key. You got to stop being a faceless YouTuber, get yourself on stream and make a connection with your audience and that's how you're going to grow. And it sucks and it's hard. But it's absolutely 100% inevitable if this is what you want to do to get out there and make a connection with your audience because it's all about entertaining and making a connection. And if you don't do that, which you really can't do without a camera, well, you know, there you are. So my my suggestion would be to, to not be a faceless gamer and to uh, get yourself a camera, put yourself on it and create that, uh, cre create that connection with your audience. Um, if you watch live streams on YouTube, gaming live streams or whatever, you look at the top 100 game streamers. There's not a single top 100 game streamer that streams without a camera. Every single one of them have cameras. Every single one. Am I saying it's impossible to have a successful live stream and get big without a camera? No, it's not impossible. Anything is possible with these spiky cleats, but it's a heck of a lot harder. It's really, really hard. In fact, I'd say nearly impossible. So make your life easier and get yourself a camera and put yourself on it. Love you guys, by the way. Sometimes I just got to speak the tough love because you guys don't watch this channel, um, you know, just because of the information. You watch this channel because of the personality that we bring to the channel and the entertainment and definitely the live stream you wouldn't watch this live stream if i just sat over on the tutorial thing and there was no picture there it'd be boring as hell uh, not that i'm all that exciting or interesting but the point is that those are all elements the personality of it is what makes this channel this channel and what makes you know scott fitcher's channel scott fitcher's channel 
Um, he's a great personality in his own way. Um, you know, other guys that do this, Alpha Gaming is a great personality in his own way. But none of us could be personalities if we didn't have the stones to put ourselves on camera. Because that's what, at the end of the day, people tune in for. So hopefully that helps. All right. Okay. There was a there was a question in the chat from GC Laredo a while back. He says, if you don't want to show yourself, wear a costume like Dr. Disrespect. And that's true. You don't have to be your face on camera. You just have to... Then, Especially then now these days with snap camera and stuff like yeah. that. Seriously, you could play character on screen. You could go on there and look like freaking Mario. Bring <laughs> Luigi with you. But yep. you got to appear on screen. You got to have a shtick. You got to have something that the audience can connect with. You really do. And I don't think, I could be wrong, but I don't think the VTuber thing is really going to do it. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, eh, I'm probably wrong. I think there are people that will watch that sort of stuff. But it's very difficult to make a connection with your audience um, in any meaningful way with an avatar. It's just not, not a thing. I mean, people watch that show. You know that show where people appear as uh, fake avatars and that sort of stuff? They don't watch that show because they can't wait to see what new avatar shows up. No, that the, the spice of the show, the climax of the show, is where they show you the person behind mm. the avatar. That is the excitement of the show. Nobody cares about the avatar. I mean, sure, they're fun and they're cool, but the spice of the show, the, the climax, is them showing you the person behind the avatar. So, <laughs> there you go, man. It's just human nature, and you can't beat human nature. Humans like to see humans. They like the personality. They like the emotion. You guys know 100% every time you leave this live stream that I have passion for what I'm doing and that I love what I'm doing. And I couldn't possibly show that to you in the same way if I was some kind of digital avatar or if I didn't have my face on screen. I can't you know stress what? to you how important it is. There, What's there up, are a, probably I can count on one hand some gamers that I know, streamers that don't show their face. However, they've been doing it for a while and they have a community of other streamers that stream with them so it, it kind of creates that mystery. Yeah. Uh, but they've been doing it for a long time. It's starting like now. Like as a long time you start you're talking 10 years or whatever. Yeah. yeah. 5 years, yeah. At least. It's too competitive these days. I think you really have to connect with your audience. And the easiest way to do that. So there you go. I know a lot of people are going to disagree. They think VTubing is the way to go, and I understand that. I understand that. I'm not telling you it can't work. I'm definitely just saying it's not the easiest way. Your PCMD says, any more videos coming for Prism? Also with OBS, how do you have multiple overlay setups? Well, there definitely will be more videos coming from Prism. In fact, I would really like to find a way to add Prism to the edge of your stream um, as a weekly segment. I don't know why it just pulled me back from there. So I'm working with them. I'm working with Prism to find ways to add to add it to the edge of your stream as a weekly segment. <coughs> and uh, so there you go. As far as OBS, how do you have multiple overlay setups? That's really simple. All you have to do is create a different overlay for each scene. And then when you switch to that scene, you will have a different overlay and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, I have one overlay for one scene. I switch scenes. I have another overlay for that scene. Um, hopefully that helped you. And thank you so much, PCMD, for the super chat. I really do appreciate it. Let's get another question. Okay. I actually just want to make a comment based on what you had said about yeah. you being the face of your stream and people want to yeah. see the face. I think that was a really good point and it, it's very well said. I think the only instance where seeing the face may have been more of a detriment was, I'm sure people have seen this in the Mandalorian. <laughs> I yeah. think everybody would have preferred the face be hidden that added to the entire mystery of the Mandalorian. But other than that, generally on YouTube, yep. it's important to be seen. Well, so. and I can think of other examples like that, like uh, Doomcock, 
He wears a mask all the time. It's part of the illusion. Hey, Dad Wars is in the house. What's up, Dad hey, Wars? Hey, Dad Wars. Um, it's part of the illusion, but it's still a character that he plays on screen. You know what I mean? He adds his his thing to it. So I, I know I probably upset some VTuber people who really think it's cool and they want to do that stuff. And I can appreciate that. Um, and I am older, so maybe it's just not a thing that I would watch. It doesn't mean there's not an audience for it. But I still believe that it's going to be more difficult to really find the kind of traction that's going to lead you to that million view month. Can you get um, enough to make a living? I don't know. But uh, I, I really think you have to be able to connect with your audience directly in one way or another in order to really find the kind of success that I think a lot of people are looking for. People want to be Dr. Disrespect and Tim the Tat Man and Ninja. They don't want to be number 487 on the list. Because trust me, number 487 on the list isn't making any money. He's not going to give you the kind of excitement and thrill of victory that everybody comes out of high school thinking, that's why I want to be a live streamer. So I'm just trying to be honest and tell you guys the easiest way to get there. <laughs> when you're old and ugly like me, you do video and streams faceless. Well, I mean, look at this. Somehow, somehow we made it work, my brother. Ah, uh, yes. But I think you can get away with videos without a face a lot easier than you can get away with live streaming without a face. Because videos have, uh, you know, videos, especially tutorials and that sort of stuff. There's plenty of B-roll and stuff like that that you can easily put over top of it and never have to show your face. Because you're telling a great story. But great storytelling isn't really what game streaming is all about. Game streaming is all about interacting with your audience and creating impressions on people and making people laugh. And it's a lot easier to do that in person, like a real person, than it is in a virtual person. All righty, let's get another question, beautiful. I know we're gonna have to we're gonna have to move on. Sorry, guys. Sorry for that uh, long diversion. Yes. yes. Uh, next question is from Matthew Kelly, and he says, "I want to ask the Ninja Chat Company a question." to add an option of having deleted messages from chats taken off the screen through the Ninja Chat browser when he's streaming. How do I contact the company that's working on the Ninja Chat? Um, well, uh, there's probably an email in there on their page. Let's see. I don't know if there is or not. Uh, there probably is. But that would be that would be the easiest way, would be to contact them through their email address, um, and this is definitely not it. Yeah, I would go to their website and find the uh, find find the actual. Uh, you know, I I guarantee you, there's there's some sort of a link or a something, um, and the video ninja, uh, the one that Dr. Rob just posted there. You can click on there. It's going to take you to the website where you download the app. There's got to be a contact me or something there, and you should be able to uh, you should be able to interact with them in some way there. That's the only thing I can figure. All right, let's get another question, honey. All right, all right. This one comes from Kevin K Seven SW Ham Radio. He says, "I'm very new. What does a guest see in the stream? The host." Or the formatted OBS output like you and Monica are seeing to us watching. And then he says, Wait, thank re you for all that, that you do. repeat that, honey. Can you repeat yes. that? He says, what does a guest see in the stream? The host or the formatted OBS output like you and Monica are seeing to us watching? Oh, okay. Well, it depends how you have it set up. Um, currently, all Monica really sees is the computer in front of her. She has another window open that has the stream on it. In case I'm talking about something on the stream, she'll see it in a couple seconds later and get an idea of what I'm talking about. So basically, she just sees the camera and the questions. She doesn't see what's on the screen like right now until it broadcasts on the regular channel. And I don't really worry too much about her having to see the screen in real time because it's not the kind of stream we're putting on there. Um, however, if you are in a situation where you're running a stream that you, you know your uh, guests have to be able to see whatever it is that you're talking about in real time, 
The easiest way to do that, I showed it a little earlier, was go down into uh, the share portion of StreamYard or Restream or whatever it is you're using and share. You can either share the screen for whatever it is that you're going to be talking about or whatever, and that way they'll see it in real time as you're broadcasting it. Now, you can't really share the whole entire thing, so they might not see your overlay and stuff, but the point is that if you're if you're talking about a video or something like that on the stream, you can share it there and they'll be able to see it in real time as well. So there you go. Hopefully that helps you. Let's get another question. Okay. Okay. Um, Captain Gluten Free has the next question. Well, hello, Captain Gluten Free. He says... All right. Okay. Let me see. I have to read this. Qu I didn't pre-read this question like usual. So, so are you guys doing better than me at this point? I'm three and four and my people are dropping like flies. Oh, oh, this has to be uh, um, fantasy. <laughs> fantasy football. Are you guys doing better than uh, me at this point? I'm three and four and my people are dropping like flies. Am I to assume Monica is in your league also? I am. I am. <laughs> I, I, I am his, in his league basically by sitting by his side. I'm not she's in his league. She's out of his league. That's what you mean. <laughs> yeah, saying. she's definitely way out of my league. She, she is not it. She's not in his league. But she's always aware of um she's always aware of what's going on. And by the way, I'm 3 and 4 as well. So, there you go. I am definitely nowhere in Monica's league though. I can promise you that. Let's get yeah, another one beautiful. Sundays get pretty pretty tense around here sometimes, <laughs> depending on how his people are doing. I do. But hear as this long as the birds keep winning, you're okay. You're okay. Yes, baby. yes. But I was gonna say I do hear. Hey, did you see? You know, Justin Herbert. He's on my bench. I'm like, <laughs> all the good ones are on your bench. Yeah, that's the way it works. Yeah, that's the way it works. All right, all right. Moving on. Um, okay. Now it looks like Dr. Rob has a question. Dr. Rob, do you really have a question? <laughs> <laughs> so someone named Dr. Dr. Rob has a question. So let's go I, ahead and see what it is. I know. Let's see what the question is. I'm using StreamYard because nope. it's easy to use. What? Nope. Nope. It's not. Okay. So it's no. just a question. I'm using StreamYard because it's easy to use and a great solution for video conferencing. However, I'm trying to add a gaming stream into that. I tried using the virtual camera in OBS and having it come into StreamYard as a camera. However, playing with the settings, it either looks bad but fluid or it will look good but then lags. Wait, we had this question. Yeah. Any advice? He's, he's just trying to, uh, he's trying to uh, elaborate so we get it. Okay. So basically, he's trying to send games to, um, to StreamYard using the virtual camera from OBS. Well, because he just um, says anything, I I, so I can do video conferencing and stream yeah, my Yeah, he does video conferencing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. I, it, chances are this is more a product of the virtual camera and the way that it works. It could also be a problem with the way that your machine is encoding because it has to encode twice. It's encoding, well, it actually has to encode three times. It's encoding the game while it's playing the game. It's encoding the game in OBS to send it out through the virtual camera. And then it's re-encoding when it sends it out to, um, when it sends it out of your, your machine to StreamYard, who then restreams it again by encoding it. Um, so the, the best thing that you could do would be to switch to OBS and stream games directly from OBS to whoever you want to stream to. Um, the virtual camera is more than likely what is causing your problem. You may be able to try something like NDI. NDI will also allow you to transfer audio. It could end up having similar types of problems, but you have more control over the quality of the NDI signal. And you can add NDI into StreamYard by adding a second camera. Um, just tell it what the second camera is, drop it down and select the NDI camera. And I think you may end up having more success that way than you are with the virtual camera. Plus you can input your audio. So hopefully that helps you out. 
Mr. Dr. Rob, Siberian Foxclaw, or whoever doesn't want to actually just give us his name so we can answer his question. Let's get another one. Okay. Okay, this one is from Slots and Gaming. Oh, hello, Slots and Gaming. And I will read it to the best of my ability. It says, Prism Live on mobile phone did ask this in the chat room. Game is loud, then my mic. Is there anything I can do to change this so people can hear me talk? All right, so he's bringing in Prism, the game from the mobile chat, and the game is too loud. So (coughs) you should be able to, it should come in with two separate audio sources. One is coming from the from the from the game I'm assuming from the mobile app and the other is coming from your camera so just turn down the volume on the game and leave your volume on your camera the same and that should solve your problem if you do not have two um, audio inputs then that's that's where the problem is so that means you're just getting the game audio directly from your uh, directly from from your microphone and that's not good either you want to come up with a better solution than that if you can so I would try to find my guess is it's coming in if it's coming in properly you have two sources you just turn down the game source and you're good Um, if it's not then uh, then yeah you're gonna have to find a way to get the game audio separate from the video audio or the uh, or the not the video but the uh, camera audio let's get another question Okay, this one I believe this is, I want to say it's Pookie, Pookie or Pussy. I'm sorry, I, I don't know. I keep getting banned on TikTok for very minor curse words. Is YouTube better for very light cursing? <laughs> uh, man, this is, this is actually a pretty funny question. Do I think YouTube is probably better for very light cursing? I think so, because you can mark your video as not for kids. Um... It doesn't mean that you are going to ever get viewers. And when you do, um, YouTube is not going to monetize your channel and that sort of stuff because YouTube, well, advertisers don't want to pay for uh, content with a lot of foul language and that stuff. So it very much limits your, um, it very much limits your monetization ability on the platform. With that being said, you can watch plenty of game streams on OBS uh, on on YouTube with cursing that just never ends. Um, you can yeah you can you can find it <laughs> you can you can do that all the time. So yeah, I I think they're pretty tolerant of it as long as the streams mark not for kids. Now, if you're cursing at a specific person and stuff like that, well that that gets into a gray area. If you're just cursing, yeah they're uh, you know, YouTube is better for heavy cursing. Yep. <laughs> I think PCMD has it nailed down. You know, you can do it. You're just not going to get, uh, you're, you're, you're just not going to get, um, monetized in the same way that someone who has a clean channel would, which is why a lot of the streams that you guys used to watch that had all kind of cursing and stuff or channels that used to have all that kind of stuff. As soon as the monetization rules changed, well, they, those channels got a lot cleaner. <laughs> yeah, so. All right, babe. What you okay. got? Okay. We're finally up to Hanky Panky's question. <laughs> hey, hey, Hanky Panky. I'm not Panky. sure Hanky Panky's still in the room. but I'm not either, but. Uh, I, I know. Okay. We did the um, best we're we could. asking it anyway because it's in the queue. It says, yeah. firstly, I must say that I love, love, love your tutorials, Michael. Well, thank says, you. I'm currently using, does this say Erian? I, I run camera to connect from my Android to my Mac. Is there a better cam link to use? So you're connecting it to your Mac. And it's... Um, I don't know much about the one that you're using. So, and I... is Did he say he has an Android? He went, yeah, connect from his Android to his Mac. Okay. Yeah, so so that's the... That's I kind of the, the, the rub there. Because you can easily connect your iPhone to your Mac. All you have to do is mirror the screen. But uh, Android is a little more difficult. I did a video on Duwan a while back. It, it's a pretty good app, but obviously it's not free. 
Um, but it allows you to connect and share your screen, um, especially your Android screen or whatever, using a cable. I'm not 100%. I, I'm pretty sure it works on Mac. Uh, somebody share the Duon video in the in the chat there. Um, yeah, there's Droid Cam. I don't know if that works on Mac. There are always other options. I don't generally connect my phone to my Mac. Well, I do, but it's... Um, it's an iPhone. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Dad Wars asks, what about NDI? I, I don't know if... Uh, yeah, I mean, NDI is an option because NDI will broadcast stuff right across the network. There are a lot of other options. Unfortunately, I don't know how good the option that you're using um, equates to... Uh, equates to. So I don't know what the better option would be. I have tested Duon. It works pretty well, but it's not free. Uh, Tech Exam and put the link in there for that. Um, but yeah, I wish I could be of more help. But unfortunately, in this case, man, uh, poor, uh, poor Hanky Panky waited a long time for me to not know the answer to his questions. Um, yeah, Epoch Cam, I know, is pretty cool stuff as well. That's been around for a very long time. Also not free, but definitely an option. And it kind of also depends what you're using it for. If you're using it to bring your camera in, something like Epoch Cam is a good choice. Do One is a great choice if you're bringing in, like, your screen. But it doesn't, I don't think, do a very good job with the camera. So there you go. Let's get another question. I wish I could uh, be of more help. But unfortunately, in this case, I suck. No. What you got, babe? Okay, a uh, question from Rican Elite. I have a dual PC <clears throat> with an internal Elgato card. What is the right way into setting it up to get the full screen resolution for my game and on my stream? Any suggestions? Also, what output should I use in OBS? Okay, so what I do... Um, what I do when I want full screen, um, if I'm running my other machine, what I'll do, if I was going to do a two game stream, let's say, if I was going to run a game on this computer that I have over here and broadcast it to this computer right here, what I would do is I would um, put an HDMI cable from the video output or a video output on my gaming machine and plug it into the Elgato I think you said you had a Camlink Pro. I'd plug it into the Camlink Pro. Then what you do is you move the game screen onto that screen over here on the computer. Then you just bring that display capture into OBS and that's how you get it. That is the easiest way to get it and it's also um, gonna be pretty simple. So I hope, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Um, because that's, that's how I would do it. I'd go HDMI to the cam link, then bring the cam link video input into OBS, and there you go. Um, and you bring it in as a video capture. So you'd bring it in like it's a camera, because you're capturing it on the cam link. So hopefully that makes sense. When you output from that machine to this one, it's going to it's going to make a window that you can't physically see on that machine. So you have to go in, you have to set it up so you can drag that window into the one that you can't actually see. So you've got to either uh, add it as a video source in OBS so you can see that window, or you have to open up the uh, Cam Link app so you can see that window. Then you can drag the game over there. It takes a little getting used to, but that's the way, that's the way I do it. And it's not an HDMI capture. It's actually... Uh, you're going to add it as a camera here. You know what? I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. Um, let's go over to my main screen and I'm going to turn on my other computer. We're going to go into our tutorial and it would, it would be dumb of me not to bother to try to at least show you how this works. Man, it's getting warm in here since I actually have this set up on my computer. So it is a, uh, it is a cam link, so yeah, you're basically right. It's an HDMI capture card. This has four HDMI ports that you can add onto it. And let me get in here. Uh, all right, so now I have my other computer booted up. My other computer has 
an HDMI cable plugged into one of the video outputs that would normally go to a monitor. But in this case, it's going into this capture card. So I can add it by clicking this plus right here and I can go to a video capture device and we'll call this VidCap4. And so now we just have to find where I have that plugged in. I think right there. So there you go. So this is the computer screen from my other computer. And all I have to do is drag the game or make the game show up in full screen on this right here and we're all set. And there's not pro there's no processing, there's no encoding, there's no BS. It is literally all being processed on the other computer and we're just getting the screen right here. It's really, really awesome. So that's the way that I would do it and I think that's the way that most of the, the big gamers do it. So there you go. Hopefully that helps you. Let's get another question. Hey babe. Not, not Jesco has the next question. All right. What is the simplest app that you can edit YouTube videos on? If you want to talk about simple apps, Filmora is one that a lot of people use that's supposed to be pretty simple. I think it's worth the time and effort to learn DaVinci. It's extremely powerful and you are going to grow as an editor and a YouTuber. You're going to want to be able to do more powerful things and it's totally free and you never have to pay for it and it does really powerful things. So I have lots of tutorials on that. In fact, my stream on the edge has a tutorial, a simple tutorial in DaVinci Resolve every single week that can help you learn from the very basics all the way up. Maybe check that out. I would recommend DaVinci Resolve for sure. Let's get another one. Yep, Dad Wars concurs. <laughs> okay, next is from uh, Twello. Twello. Uh, sound lagging on both you OBS and Prism. Please give, give tips. All right, so if you're getting sound lagging and that sort of stuff, um, it could be a couple of different things. If you're using a USB microphone and, you know, it's totally separate from your USB camera and you're bringing them both in on the same USB bus, the bus could be overloaded, which means that one thing is taking precedent over the other. Obviously, probably your camera, which means your voice is lagging behind. Try to move the uh, port to the other port um, or another USB bus that will have more bandwidth. Tech Examine just posted a link in there that uh, it, the video is called You're Wrong About Lag. It will walk you through the steps that you can take to hopefully fix your problem. <coughs> if you can't solve the problem at the end of the day, um, as long as the lag is always the same amount of time, you can, um, you can use some tricks that I show you in that video that will help you speed, uh, uh, slow down your video so it matches up with your audio. So there are a couple of different techniques and Dr. Rob just posted another video as well that is um, also about lag and latency and that sort of stuff. So you could check either one of those out and they will hopefully help you out. Let's get another video. Let's get another question. Okay. Macho Chaos has a next question. Awesome. Hello, Macho Chaos. What can I do if programs that are being captured with application audio capture aren't being heard on stream? I recently did a factory reset on my PC and switched back to Windows 10 from Windows 11. And when I did my last stream on Monday... Oh. Wow. Back light just became a member. Well, thank you. Yeah, everybody, everybody in my ear is like, I couldn't figure out what's going on. Thank you for joining the streamer spot. You can look for the link to find out how you can get to the Discord server. Uh, you should have access to it in the, uh, in, 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 you know, on YouTube. Or what is it, the, uh, community post section. And I saw Gen Z asked a question here as well. Gen Z, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer that for you. Tomorrow at 8.15 a.m., there might or might not be a video that you wanna see. Because that's the subject of tomorrow's 8.15 release. Yes. In case people wonder what I'm talking about, 
I'll show you how to do a countdown timer. Yes. Thank you, Rick and, uh, Rick and Elite. Rick and Elite, thank you so much, my friend. I do appreciate it. You guys, you guys in the membership. You help me keep doing this. It means a lot. Uh, all right, babe. Yeah, slots and gaming. When it changes, it changes, my friend. Rick and Elite joined. We change. All right, what's the question, beautiful? Just like that. Okay, now again, um, I'll start over. It says, what can I do if programs that are being captured with application audio capture aren't being heard on stream? I recently did a factory reset on my PC and switched back to Windows 10 from Windows 11. And when I did my last stream on Monday, after re-adding the application audio captures, nothing was being heard on stream, even though I could hear it on my end. All right. Well, you're automatically hearing it through desktop audio. So there's that. Always keep in mind that there's a difference between... Yeah. Um, so let me, bring, let me bring you over here to the tutorial screen. Uh, man, we got a lot of stuff here. So let's remove some stuff. All right, so there are a couple of things that can go wrong. Um, let me, I want to open up, uh, I want to open up uh, Spotify here. Now, if I play this Spotify right now, right now, if I play it, I'm going to hear it in my headphones, but it doesn't mean it's going out to the stream. So in order to add this to the stream, I've got to click the plus and I've got to go to audio application audio output capture and we'll just call this Spotify and then we're gonna click OK and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna right click and we're gonna go to vertical layout so you guys can actually see this so we added Spotify right there but obviously you can't see anything we're gonna drop down this session and we're gonna go to Spotify which shockingly isn't showing up you know why it's not showing up because it's not hearing any audio so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to play some audio here. You guys will not be able to hear this. But it is playing. And then I'm going to go... I'm going to have to cancel that and go in here to properties. And there we go. Now it's showing up. Now you have to add the executable. Boom. You have to add it. If it doesn't show up here, the stream's not going to hear it. And then once you do that and click OK, you can see it right here. Now, and I gotta, I gotta pause it. There we go. Um, so there, I paused it. You can see it's not getting audio anymore. Now, there is a possibility that you didn't add the executable in there. That's the first thing that you could have done. The other thing is you got to go down here to here, go to Advanced Audio Properties, and check and see what's under Spotify. Um, my monitor's off. It doesn't matter. My monitor can be off because I'm going to hear it through desktop audio anyway. So that's what my headphones are set to. But if I wanted to uh, monitor it, I could turn it to monitor and output. Or I could turn it to monitor only so only I hear it and the stream doesn't. But as long as it's on monitor off, it should be going to the stream. So there's one of two problems. You didn't actually physically add the executable in is probably the issue or you don't have your audio monitoring on properly. But for something like this or a game, you're gonna hear it automatically because it's playing through your desktop audio. Um, so always keep in mind that just because you can hear it doesn't mean the stream can. You gotta go through all the processes to find that missing link. And hopefully that will help you find the missing link. Let's get another question. Okay. Okay, next question is from John. Hello, John. John says, hello, I have a problem with OBS virtual camera. Like when I hit the start virtual camera button, my virtual camera placeholder flies away or shrinks. And this is OBS virtual camera? <coughs> yeah, I don't understand. I don't know what people are doing with the OBS virtual camera. I can't figure it out. Well, it seems like so many, people are, so many <laughs> people are using it, but I don't know what they're using it for. Obviously, because I'm getting so many questions about the OBS virtual camera, it's a feature that's not functioning properly. And it could be OBS 28, or it could be one of a bunch of different factors. <clears throat> I don't know what's causing OBS that, uh, that to work improperly, but what I would do is if you continue to have the same problems, go into the OBS forums 
and tell them what's happening and hopefully they can fix it for you. They are very responsive when you're having a problem in OBS um, to go in there and leave, the, uh, leave your information as to what the problem is and somebody will get back to you and tell you how to fix it or uh, something like that. So a virtual cam works awesome, not in 28, okay. <laughs> so, so maybe it could be a version 28 thing. Um, there you go. Let's get another question, beautiful. Okay. The world, according to Fox, wants to know, are you ever going to have a meetup? Oh, Mr. Fox. Yes, I'm, I'm sure inevitably at some point we will have a meeting, a meetup. I've been well known for meeting with audience members uh, a long time ago. And I would absolutely love to do it again. Um, previously, we had somebody who organized the whole thing. We met up in places like Baltimore, and we also met up in um, Niagara Falls. We had an absolute blast, an absolute blast. Um, the main thing is I don't have the time to organize it. So if we can find somebody who is interested in organizing a gathering like that and just finding uh, you know, a couple of hotels we can stay at, and maybe a place where we can all meet at, uh, you know, like reservations for a larger party or whatever, so we can all have dinner together, and maybe make it somewhere where there's other things to do, like Niagara Falls or Baltimore, where we went down to Inner Harbor and all had lunch and enjoyed, um, you know, yeah, yeah, then then I'd absolutely do it. The word in to Fox Vegas would be fantastic. I would absolutely love it because you can go to any one of the resorts or hotels. And you can get uh, you could get a you know a thing catered in one of their uh, one of their conference rooms. We could meet up there. We could all go out in the evenings and do whatever. There are plenty of restaurants if you want to split up and go explore to do that. So there are plenty of opportunities for that. I just would need somebody who wants to take on the uh, responsibility of actually organizing everything. And uh, because needless to say, these things all cost money. We would have to get people committed. They would have to, you know, pay money to get the, you know, all that stuff. So we could get, so we could get a catering room and be together and play some games and maybe have a little a couple of people might want to talk. Who knows? I, I would definitely do it though. I'm definitely not against it. I think it would be an absolute blast. And I had a person who used to do it for my old channel and maybe I'll call, maybe I'll give her a call and um, see if she might be interested in putting something like that together. I don't know. We'll see. But hey, it's not something I'm against. I think it would be a lot of fun. We got a couple suggestions also. Dad Wars yeah. says Sesame Place. <laughs> oh, that would be fun. Somebody said Niagara Falls again. Mohegan Sun is out here. Um, yeah. Vegas. Somebody mentioned Vegas. So it sounds like there's <coughs> at least some interest in it. So that's that's good. Yeah. Um, okay. Maybe maybe uh, maybe it's something we do in. Uh, the early part of next year. Who knows? That would be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Not before the holidays. <laughs> Thank you, Blue Surfer. All right. What else we got? Okay. We got um, David Musa wants to know how to set up Microsoft DV Cam with Firewire on OBS Studio. Microsoft DV Cam with Firewire on OBS Studio. Yes. I don't know. Uh, I hate to say it, but uh, I don't have one. So uh, I can't, it's nothing I can test. It's nothing I've tried out. Uh, could cruise. Is Firewire could, still around? Yeah, I don't even know if Firewire is still around. Dad Wars said the same thing. So I don't know. I don't have one to test. I could. <laughs> I, I wish I could tell you, but I, but I don't know. And uh, Dad Wars wants to know, uh, what about a cruise or Captain Gluten Free? Are you paying for it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can get a you can get a cruise super cheap, but I could tell you right now, you ain't getting Monica on a boat. <laughs> I'm if on the a cruise boat, is super mother. cheap, I probably don't want to be on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I was just say I'm I'm a little adverse to water, but you know. Yeah, she good. she likes to be boat adjacent. <laughs> boat adjacent, <laughs> yeah, like that commercial. Uh huh. Um, that's true. I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get another one. <laughs> okay. All right. Are you ready for the next one? Okay. This Dad next Wars one is says Walt Disney World, my treat. 
Oh my gosh! Wow. If you're paying, that's, you're going. That, yeah. yeah, that's a lot of money, my friend. Yeah. Don't wow. question it. He says he's yeah. got it. That's right. <laughs> I know. Raise your hand if you want to go to Walt Disney. <laughs> I'm in. Yeah. Yep. All right, babe. What you got? Okay. Um, it's from Polosia. Polosia. It says, I want to be able to push a button on my stream deck that copies the URL of the Chrome tab I'm on and somehow paste that into the browser source property in OBS. Is this possible or a pipe dream? I can do some coding if needed. Huh. Wow, that's a really, really, really... Well, all right. So I'm going to tell you right now, there is absolutely no question that it's something that you could do. I have no doubt. Um, and Dr. Rob says exactly what I was going to say. It's probably some sort of script that you would have to write. Um, you use the script keys so that they would understand what it's trying to do. But basically, you hit the key and it, and it runs a script that would do the things that you just said. There is definitely a way to do it in the Stream Deck, but I'm not a programmer. Um, and it's definitely going to require somebody who would have to probably script that up to do what you want it to do. But yes, I do think it is definitely possible with the Stream Deck. What you got, babe? Oh, okay. Alrighty then. This one it's is good from to see Romy. you here. You haven't you haven't left for. I haven't left for Disney yet. Yeah. <laughs> Not yet. Uh, this was from Rowena. I am struggling to sync my audio with video. You mentioned last time around that for you to eliminate the lag, you connect your mic to your camera. And since the both signals are coming into your Elgato encoder, the lag is zero. I tried that setup, but there still is a lag between the audio and video. It seems that Elgato HD60 does not encode the audio, thus the audio is picked up first by OBS. Can you please confirm this? Uh, unfortunately, I cannot confirm that because I don't have um, I don't have one of those. But I can tell you, we'd have a lot more problems because. The HD60 does games, and I never hear anybody complaining that the game audio shows up delayed um, for their game. So there's got to be something else going on here. There's got to be something else going on here. When you add your HD60 camera, you don't have to add any other audio. That's should That signal should include the audio from the camera. Um... Oh, so Captain Gluten's Free says, yes, it's a big lag. Well, that's interesting. This is not something I had heard about, about the HD60. But honestly, plug in a game a console to the HD60 and try it. If the PS4 lags audio, then your microphone is going to lag audio. And I don't know why that would be a thing that's happening on the HD60. The first thing that I would do is go to Elgato's web website and say, why the hell is my audio lagging on the HD60 and see if there's a fix for it. Because maybe there's a fix for it. That just seems crazy. I have never had that problem on an Elgato product. Um, the only thing I can think of is that there's something different about the HD60 because it has the, uh, the game encoding stuff on it that could be uh, different. But uh, maybe there's there's got to be some kind of situation there. Um, and you also have to consider the fact that the HD60 is not designed for cameras. It is designed for gaming. Um, but if you're not having the problem when you connect a video game, I can't imagine why you would have the problem when you were connecting um, a microphone it just or, or a camera. It just That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, and it honestly doesn't really make any sense that the video game would lag behind either because you're just sticking it in the HDMI port. The HDMI port is getting the signal at the exact same time, perfectly mixed. And then all that's doing, they, all the HD60 is doing is turning it into USB format. So I don't, I don't understand it. Um, the only th there's only two things I can think of. Your HD60 is broken. There's something wrong with the HD60. Or there is a third thing, and that is that you're adding your microphone twice. Once, um, once as a USB input or something, and once um, directly as part of the HDMI or the or the camera. So I wish I could help you more, but I can't see your setup. So, all right, what you got, babe? Question from Ray Sanchez. Says, Hello, Ray. Any 
Any recommendations for free sound effect sources other than YouTube? Also, anything that we should look out for to make sure we do not violate anyone's copyright. Oh, I see Ray also says there are a few videos for fixing the audio lag in the Elgato HD60. Thank you, Ray. Hopefully these guys can find one of those videos that will help them out. Can you repeat the question for me, please? Any recommendations for free sound effect sources other than YouTube? Also, anything that we should look out for to make sure we do not violate anyone's copyright. Okay, well, as far as um, sound effects that I've used in the past, um, when you're talking about free ones other than the YouTube ones, there really aren't many. Uh, I, I've used Elgato El, uh, or Envato Elements before for sound effects. I've used um, a couple others, a couple others. The, the free sites that offer music and that sort of stuff don't generally offer sound effects. They're not for Foley. So you're going to find like free music sites out there, but you're not going to find a lot of stuff for sound effects because that's just not what they're for. Um, so that's what makes the YouTube sound effects section so powerful. It actually has a lot of pretty decent ones that I use quite often. But otherwise, you got to kind of go with one of the actual sound providers out there that you have to pay for, like Epidemic Sounds or um, as Envato Elements. I think has a lot of cool sound effects that work pretty well. Um, the logician says free sound has a lot of sound effects, but you have to search to find what you want. So maybe try freesound.org. I can pretty much tell you that freesound.org is going to have a license agreement. And as long as you follow their license agreement by including a link or whatever it is in your description, you're going to be fine. You're not going to have any problems with copyright issues. As far as swiping sound effects just that are out there anywhere, yeah, well, you know, uh, you can probably get away with it uh, most times as long as the sound effects are pretty short. So there's that. There is that. You're going to have a lot more problems with audio music than you ever will with sound effects. Um, I've never had anybody mess around. Yeah, SoundCloud is another one. So there are, there are a couple examples. Hopefully that helps you out. Let's get another question. Okay, question from not Jesco again. He says, does putting keywords in the description of a stream or video make it show up faster? Um, all right, so keywords in the description of a video or whatever, <coughs> it's not gonna make it show up or go out any faster per se. The kind of things that directly affect a stream are how the people are interacting with it. In other words, are there a lot of people chatting in it? Are there a lot of thumbs up? Are there people interacting with the content by sharing it out? Those kind of things will escalate how fast YouTube pushes out your live stream while you are live. But if you want people to watch it or be able to search for it later, then it never hurts to have keywords in your title or your, you know, or your description. Because if somebody just happens to be searching for whatever subject you're talking about, obviously it says it will say, hey, this live stream is there right now. You have the keyword in your title and it'll direct them right to you. So yeah, there's always a chance. There's always a chance. But I'm not sure that uh, keywords are quite as uh, important if you're just trying to bring people in physically while you're live because that requires that someone's actually searching for that exact topic while you're live. So there you go. Hopefully that helps. What you got, babe? All right. I have a question from We're Flying. Well, is, hello, there a we're way flying. To have, is there a way to have sounds with live chat plugins? Um, you know, I, I suspect what you're talking about is have the chat able to trigger live sounds and that sort of stuff. If you're on Twitch, there are things like StreamerBot and a couple of other things like that that will allow you to use the chat to trigger different events and even sounds for your chat. But there's nothing like that on YouTube just yet, unfortunately. But if you're interested in learning more about that, check out apps like uh, StreamerBot and stuff like that. All right, babe, what you got? Okay. I got nothing. That was the what? last question. What? what? What do you mean that was the last question? Well, How could that be the last question? 
That I was thought the last we just question started to answer me. questions like just a little while ago. We started to ask questions and then now you're telling me that we're not getting any more questions. Correct. There are no more questions because we shut the form down. Well, who shut the form down? We're going to find out right guess. now. Yes. Who shut the form down? Let's find out. Oh, goodness gracious. I think I know. Do you? I think I do. We're going to find out, though. Who shut the form down? Once and for all, we're going to know. <laughs> Oh, that's the wheel of blame. That's oh my the... goodness, Dagler, shut the porn down! Oh, no. Why would you do that? We hardly ever see you, and then when you do come to the stream, you're shutting the porn down! Oh my goodness, why? Oh, we love you though, Dad Wars. We really do. <laughs> what the form? <laughs> You guys it's are... a wheel of blame. <laughs> he wants to shut the form down. Bro, spin wheel. <laughs> he said he was framed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. You guys are the best, man. You guys are the freaking best. But it is time for us to head out, right, honey? It It is time. It's, it's later than expected, but it went faster than I could have imagined. I mean, this was this was the fastest two in a two hours and 20 minutes ever. I know it's crazy. We got a lot of questions done. We did, we did. We got a lot of good ones. There was a bunch I couldn't answer tonight. I apologize for that. I do yeah, my best, you, guys. You tried your best. That's it. That's it. Yes. So I want to say good night to everybody. Good night to all the mods. You did a fabulous job again today. I want to say good night to everybody watching, or good morning, good afternoon. You guys are great and awesome, and thank you for being here yet once again. We truly appreciate that. We will be here next week, next Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So come back and bring your questions. Again, I saw there were some questions coming in to chat at the end. Unfortunately, the form was shut down, but come back next week at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Put, put them in the, in the form, and we will gladly answer them for you. Mm. So everybody have a wonderful rest of, rest of the day, week, and have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Thank you, honey. You're welcome. All right, so I do see a really quick question from Mega Squad. Trevor wants to know how he can have one scene with multiple cameras that switch around like Nick Nimmons. I can tell you right now, Nick Nimmon is using the ATEM Mini to do it. With that being said, you can use the, um, the source switcher or the advanced scene switcher to set up a timer on multiple cameras in the exact same scene. It will just rotate through them. It will do exactly the same thing. Then you just add those multiple cameras to your computer. It will rotate them around. In fact, I can show you how to do that um, next week, if you remind me. Uh, remind me, I will show you how to set it up so that my camera will rotate to two or three different cameras. And it's pretty, it's, it's pretty simple stuff. <coughs> I want to take a moment and thank all of the amazing moderators that came in. It was really nice to see Dad Wars out hanging with us again. Dr. Rob, moderating, regulating. Of course, we have Cyperian Foxclaw and anyone else that helped us mod tonight. You guys do yeoman's work, especially with all the ridiculous bots that we get hit with. It's amazing. I want to thank Michael for helping me produce the stream and, of course, the amazing Monica for reading all your questions and putting up with my crap. She's the best. Do me a big favor, guys. I cannot stress enough how much, how rewarding it is for me to be able to sit behind this desk and entertain, but also educate you guys every single week. If it's something that you have passion for, do not give up, never quit. Always strive to do what you love and enjoy it. Doesn't mean that sometimes you won't have to get another job to finance this sort of thing. But if you don't give up, you can't fail. So keep at it. I love you guys. I have a passion for this. And I really do appreciate you hanging out with me every Wednesday night. Do me a big favor. Go out there and do something nice for someone else so that you can help make this world a better place. That's, that's what it's all about. I will see you guys next week. Love you. <laughs> um, I'm amazingly blessed.
See you soon. Today's video is sponsored by Envato Placeit. Placeit is a marketplace for all kinds of assets that can help you with your YouTube channel. Things like art and live streaming and video assets. You can create amazing face cams and live streaming overlays really easily. There are hundreds of templates and each face cam and overlay can be modified with different designs, colors, text, and text fonts. The process is super easy and you can even incorporate your own logo or if you're like me, your own Placeit design logo. And you can put it right in your design. This gives you an infinite number of overlays and face cam possibilities for your live streams. And they're so easy to create, you can use a different one every time you live stream if you wanted to. So please, click the link in the description and check out Envato Place It for yourself. Big thanks to the sponsors that support this channel. You can find their links down below in the description under the heading sponsors. I couldn't possibly do this without them or you, so thanks. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.